it's just too greasy. Hello, people of the world of internet. Today, I am going to play with some dry ice on not just the MR2, but the beetle as well, which I am restoring to give away to one of you. Hey, my nails match the car. There is a link in the video description below where you can go to enter to win Ragnar. And if you're new and you like to get caught up on the last video where I worked on him, up above my head is hopefully not dandruff. I drove Mr. Dose back over here today because he needs to get dry ice blasted as well. Time to make some mess. This is gonna, this is gonna absolutely destroy the inside of my shop. To accomplish this task today, I'm gonna be using this little guy right here, the Cool Master dry ice blasting machine. And that is approximately 300 pounds of dry ice. down on the amount of dirt in my shop by about six percent exactly ah I got a little bit of a geometry problem happening over here there this will work it's a little breezy from the air conditioner but it's kind of impossible to enclose the whole thing because the pressure from the dry ice blasting so I leave one side open and these penguins you guys are gonna get dirty nope don't fight me. Oh, penguin down. There, you guys stay in here, keep cool. So I have a massive problem. I wish I would have checked this earlier. The company that delivered the dry ice sent me the wrong ice. So if you see these pellets, these are huge pellets. They will not, oh, that's really cold. They will not work in that dry ice machine. It requires three millimeter pellets, which are super tiny. And because somebody's gonna say it in the comments, no, you cannot mash them up with a hammer or cut them with a saw or throw them in a blender. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. Accidents happen. Hi, it's a week later. I got more ice. Let's get to work. When I dry ice blasted under my 83er Quattro, uh, there's a link up above tap if you wanna check out that video. That was more of a best case scenario, like restoration. This one's gonna be a little bit rougher. See how tiny these pellets are? They're three millimeter. Let's get some good before shots so you can see what I'm working with. You get a good look at that. See this surface rust everywhere. Up above the transaxle, rear suspension, other side, transaxle mount. Look at that grime. Let's see how much it'll take off. Let's start out by trying this tip. I haven't used this one yet. I wanna try all of them because I didn't use them all last time. I'm only gonna fill it up with one scoop. Without further ado, let's get to work. Man, some of those old undercoatings coming off in massive chunks. Look at the size of this one. That's a whole ass potato chip right there. Don't eat it though, that would taste bad. For this being a 53 year old car, it's actually cleaning up really nice. That's the stuff that's coming off. I haven't done that yet. This is what it looks like underneath. Up here where you see the surface rust, it looks like it was from moisture or something, maybe brake fluid leaking that came out of this hole right here and ate away at the paint. You can see the lower half of the fuel tank is really surface rusted, but right here on this other part, it's just like nice clean metal. Still running to an issue though with the air compressor having too much moisture in it and causing the dry ice blaster to clog. So I'm gonna add an inline dryer here in a bit and see if it makes a difference. Let the machine sit for a little bit so now I can load it back up. And this tip works pretty good for blasting off those big sheets of undercoating I noticed.
Ahoy mateys! I come bearing cheesy gifts from the sea. <laughs> what? <laughs> Charlie is saving the day. So he went to the old freight harbor and picked up this decadent little unit. There's a pun in there if someone got it. You get it? A decadent little unit? Is it doing harbor freight things? Of course it is. Huh. What in the too many chip challenge is going on under here? I tried a bit of a different approach this time compared to last time on the Audi by blasting all the big chunks first and then I'm gonna go over and get everything that I missed before. It's kind of ass backwards. There's a couple little areas right here the dry ice blaster wasn't doing anything to it because I think it's really gooey just soaked in brake fluid right here. Same with right here. It really had no effect on this. Oh yeah, it's goo. That's why. It doesn't really do much for the gooey stuff. That's why on the Audi, I pressure wash the underside of the car first to get all the goo off and it helps. Look at that, that's a 53 year old car and you can still see the zinc coating. Good to go, give this a shot. Think I'm gonna try out a different tip now. We'll try out this little red tip. Welcome to the following day. Everything from pretty much here forward is done. Oh no! My cover all, my thing's ripped. Everything is made so cheaply. St oh, don't stick to my finger. Extra precaution while this dries, because I don't have time to wait. There, just in case. Yesterday, adding the two dryers to the airline helped significantly, except for the fact that I didn't pay attention to the water level, it filled up within like five or 10 minutes with moisture. I already used up all the decadent, dec decahedron, whatever. Look, see? It's crazy how much water gets full of this thing. It made a massive difference though. I was able to just blast nonstop until those cups ended up filling up with water and then it made its way back into the machine. So it's not an issue with the machine, it's just the compressor. This thing got covered in nonsense. That is gross. Today's mission is the engine, the transaxle, and this rear suspension area to include the forks for mounting the engine and transaxle. kill and put it on program seven. 144 PSI, 65 pounds an hour. Yeah, 65 pounds an hour. Let's try, I'm gonna give this gold one a shot. It has a fairly large opening like the green one. A Little bit smaller though, I believe. So ideally, before you do this, you should pressure wash and degrease the heavy gunk, but I wanted to see what this thing was capable of if you didn't do that. As you can see, it really doesn't have much effect on super greasy areas. Right here's an area that's blasted clean, but you can see all the remnants of that undercoating and grease buildup that was on top there that didn't blast off, and that's just because it's really sticky. Again, like I said, I was doing this for learning purposes. I just wanted to see what it's capable of, worst case scenario. So now I know, and you should definitely degrease first. With that said, I'm gonna do this transaxle. It's covered in grease and dirt, and I wanna see how it can clean that, if at all. I mean, that is so caked. So this is worst case scenario. Let's give it a shot. Look at all that water. Holy shit. I just drained this like not even 20 minutes ago. Look at that. The other one had a little bit in it. 
That's crazy. As I expected, it had pretty much zero effect on the transaxle. It's just too greasy. I mean, it cleaned the grounding strap, kind of. That's about it though, it didn't do anything. As far as the engine, it got the carburetor nice and clean. You can see over here on the side, just a quick pass with it, it worked great. The purpose of a dry ice blaster is not to replace a pressure washer or a sand blaster. It's meant to be non-invasive and still preserve the surface is underneath the grime when you blast it. If I were to sandblast under this car, it would have took the finish off. Additionally, if I were to pressure wash and use most degreasers, it would have taken the zinc coating off this hardware. These machines are designed to be used alongside other detailing methods and cleaning methods, especially if you have like a giant detailing shop, that's where one of these things will come in clutch. For the average person, I don't think it's necessary to have a tool like this, but if you restore cars for a living or own a detailing business, those things are perfect. Yes, I blew my ass out. I'm gonna use some oven cleaner and the pressure washer and I'm gonna degrease the transaxle real quick. All right, so now that it's freshly degreased, round two. The oven cleaner got about 80, 90% of the gunk off of here. There's still some stuff that's so thick that even oven cleaner and that pressure washer couldn't touch. Scrubbing it doesn't really do much either. I tried off camera and the bristles just stuck to the grease and didn't move anywhere. My hand and the brush moved, but the bristles stayed still. Soda blasting is another alternative, but it makes a massive mess all over the place. And I don't have a vapor blast cabinet, so that's out of the equation. You know when you go to the dentist and they're cleaning the very far back of your teeth, the little metal pick, and they find pieces of plaque that they have to like pry so hard it feels like it's gonna snap the tool and then finally it flings off and you're like, fuck, I'm disgusting. That's what's happening here. This stuff is stuck on here so hard that like I'm literally pushing. I just came out of this thing. Oh geez. This, this is a mess. Absolute mess. All of that, with the exception of a couple pieces of tape and a cap, came off the bottom of the bug. Give you an idea of just how much that is. That's, that's a mound. That's like three inches tall of just shit. Clean. Here is the underside. So much better. That's wild. It almost looks like a new car and it's 53 years old. Pinch weld area. See those little bits of surface rust, but it's not too, too bad. It can be POR'd. The rear suspension area, it's got quite a bit more corrosion on it, but it's a lot cleaner than it was. And here's the driver's side. Up above the transaxle, the undercoating was fairly well adhesed. It's getting re-undercoated anyway, but all the big chunks are gone. And then again, like I said, it does not do anything for heavy grease. You can see it's still on there. So I'm gonna have to pressure wash and scrub back here. In case you guys wanna know more about this little cool master beast, I will leave a link in the video description below to their website and you can go check out some more information on it. Well, I still have usable ice. 
it's probably about up to here or so. I wanna get the underside of this car knocked out. I would like to be able to make more than one video on the MR2, but I have to get this Beetle done because I only have a matter of a couple weeks left to have it finished up. And I'd like to do a car view on it before the giveaway ends for you guys. The next video I do on it, I should hopefully have the front axle back from the machine shop. So that's gonna go on with the new tires and I'll take care of the suspension in the rear. God, that thing's so dirty. And then the engine and transaxle project can begin before I put those back in there and hopefully I just got little things after that. I can get it knocked out. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.